Hello there, and as usual, I'm Aaron from Last Day Gamers, and welcome. And with the release of Medieval Engineers today, I thought it'd be very interesting to do a little bit of an introduction, explain some of the controls, and show you some of the features. Now, I've been playing this in pre-release, so I know a little bit of the tips and tricks and how to do little things, and I thought, so you could build your castle of your dreams a little bit faster, i would show you some of the controls today. Now, before we go any further, I want to make it clear that this is just going to be showing the very basics, and it's just going to be enough to get you started in building your castles, as well as showing some of the features that I've not really covered in the recent few videos of pre-release. So one of the biggest elements that separates this from Space Engineers is the ability to actually build blocks in blocks. And you've heard me talk a little bit about this, but let me explain it and tell you exactly what keys to press. So we've got ourselves some wooden walls here equipped, and we're gonna start just building up a nice basic house block. But you notice there's a problem. We can't actually build a block in this area. Now, if I hold Alt down, you'll see it'll actually fill in the area. But if I want this to do it automatically, I can press Z and it'll automatically compound the blocks together. So I can build this house very fast, very efficient, and I don't have to keep pressing Alt. But if I decide to press Z, you'll notice that we're going to go between the compound block mode and normal mode itself there as well. So you can see when your blocks are going into each other. Now, it doesn't just accept one block. You can also start getting really complicated and putting blocks in blocks of blocks. And we could even add a chest or a bed in there. And we've got so many blocks in one block. But it, it's, it's just a great feature. It's really exciting to have a play around with. Anyway, let's move on and have a look at something more mechanical. So we all know what you want to be building. You want to be building carts. You want to be building wheelbarrows. All sorts of crazy inventions. I mean, the wheelbarrow's probably not that crazy. But this is using these blocks here. And as you can see, we've got a rope drum. We've got turn wheel crosses. We've got loads of different little variations of things. We've got wheels. We've got rotors. And we can use these all to our advantage. We've also got a torsion spring that can be used for catapult builds. Now, one thing I want to show you here is the catch block and the catch lock block. So I'll place this one down. You can actually have a look at it. So we're going to actually build a little bit of a rope terminal here. And we're going to grab a beam and stretch this across with a rope drum in the middle so as you can see it works just like a rotor in space engineers if you've not experienced one of them you just have to connect up these two areas so we'll extend them both out and we'll just bring them a little bit further and we're going to slap the rope drum right in the middle so the rope drum should fit in the middle and these are going to pop together unlike in space engineers so we'll delete that side and attach that up so now both sides are actually synchronized with the rotors without having to do any little funky sort of bugs or anything then we grab a turn wheel stick that on the side and with the press of T, we can actually rotate this and that'll actually retract the rope inward. So let's actually use it to pull something. So now I'm going to show you another little feature with these blocks. These blocks can actually be turned from a static object that could be used to support a house, like you can see here, to add to its sort of structure, to an object that is actually going to be movable and manipulated. So we can actually move that up here, for instance, and we'll just cut a few blocks up and we'll add a little catch for our rope ending. Now these rope endings can connect your rope up without actually rolling any of it out. So we've connected that up, and then all we have to do is control X, lift it a little bit into the air, like so, delete the bottom off, and you'll see it drops into a shape that's now free floating and free to move. Rotate that around in whatever angle we want. Hitting T again will connect the rope up, so T to T, and now the rope is connected up. Now all we have to do is pull this handle and we should be able to pull the rope. Sometimes if we don't pull it the right way though, you'll get that result. So maybe we have to wind it up the other way. Yeah, you can see, wind the rope drum up and we're actually pulling that object now towards us. So that is just the real basics of that sort of system. We can also get a little bit more advanced by looking at the lock catch. Now the lock catch itself, we'll just stick that on the end. It's not, not gonna make too much difference at the moment. Actually, we'll make a separate pillar. So we're just going to rotate that around, stick that on the pillar. Now the lock catch works very much like these standard sort of catches, but you've got this little instrument here, and as you can see, that's going to actually click and block that from spinning in that direction. So that really works as like an anti-reversal latch. Say you only want this to spin one way, and you can have that on, or you want to stop the system from being used. Another really creative little idea, something you can use in your inventions. So now I'm not going to try to insult you by explaining how a wheel works, well, this wheel itself is a little bit more complicated. It's not got an actual axle with it. So say, for instance, I drop this and I've got a wood beam between it and I push this along. The wood beam in the middle is just going to rotate. So you're going to have to use catch blocks like we've used on the rope drum to actually make these wheels rotate. So if we drop that down and we place another, 
like so. And we've actually lost a wheel because we've cut a part off, but I think it'll still roll quite fine. You'll see how it'll freely roll, and we've got this car in the middle. So we'll just quickly delete that, and we can push it past. So just a really simple car, and you're going to need this sort of thing for building your mines, connecting multiple things up. So imagine connecting a rope up to a pulley with a car, and you can just get even more complicated from there. It's really simple. So the next thing I want to show you is the rope tension spring. Now this has multiple ways, and it uses the ropes to actually store the energy, and you can use that to repel objects, move objects, and all sorts of crazy devices. So let's just extend this shaft up a little, and we'll add a rope hook on the back of it. So we'll rotate that around, swap that down into place, and then all we have to do is hook that up to our little wheel behind it. And using the power of this, we should be able to crank that drum actually back, so you can see how we've cranked it back into position. And this could be the really easy base for a catapult, and releasing this will release all the tension that's actually stored in the rope, so let's release it. And there you go, you can see how it's actually flying forward, working really simple, just really cool to have a mess around with, and I think you're going to get your hang of it really easily. So what I actually want to show you now is the structural integrity mode. By hitting N on the keyboard, you can actually see the structural integrity and how it's been affected. Now green is showing that there's not much stress on it, and where there's red areas, it's showing there's a build-up. You've also got orange and areas, and basically the closer colour to it are red, the more likely chance of it collapsing is. So if you are building anything with structural integrity enabled, then you want to make sure and pay attention to this and use this as a building mechanic for all your buildings. So once again, it's pressing N and if it's red, it's gonna fail on you. So keep that in mind. Now, one of the final things that I wanted to show you with this is some of the static objects that are gonna probably play quite an important part in survival at a later stage. So we've got things like chairs, we've got desks, we've got beds, as you can see we place in here. We've got these little cabinets. These cabinets at the moment, by pressing T on them, you can also change the color of your little character chore thing. I'm not sure what to call him at the moment. And you can see as we change the value, we change the sort of look that it has on. Not really too much effective. I'm sure it's just a work and process at the moment. It just happens to be on this box. But it's just another cool little feature that they've added. We've also got barrels. We've got light torches with flames that you can turn out as well. That's pretty cool. You just aim at the top of it and hit T and then it's ready to go. So let's try that. Press T and lights goes off. We've got fire pits. We've got all sorts of variations of fiery tools. Very exciting indeed. And I can't wait to see what these are actually going to have. They also have flags and maybe you could even mod these flags so they could have the banner of your own sort of faction on in the future. I don't know, that, that'd be really cool. A big LSG logo or something up there representing the castle itself or maybe go with some more medieval style logo. But anyhow, that is just the basics of Medieval Engineers and hopefully it's got you started. If you needed a little bit of help and this got you through the initial little stages, let me know. I'd like to thank you guys for watching and I'll see you next time.